I guess it was about four years after I started. I did uh, about five years. Uh, the first film was late 54. And Some Like It Hot came along in 59. And uh, we had met socially, just hello, how are you, that's all. And I had admired his work, my God, uh, from the time I was a kid. Uh, but I didn't know him well. Um, he came up to me in a restaurant and uh, uh, I was sitting with Felicia and having a bite, and I said, hello, Billy, and he says, listen, he says, could I sit for just a moment at the front? I want to say something very quick here. <laughs> and I said, sure, sir. And so he says, I got this thing here. He says, it takes place there. There are a couple of guys, they're musicians, and they see the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, and the gangsters with the <laughs> and they see you, and you run with this other guy, and now you gotta hide because they're gonna go fuh, 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 and they're gonna get you. And so you join an all-girl orchestra, which means you're gonna be in drag for about three quarters of the picture. You gonna do it? <laughs> and for some reason, I thought for one split second, and I said, yes. He said, okay, and he walked away. And about six months later, the script showed up, and I read it. I thought it was the most brilliant farce it's I'd ever read. Film. And that when it literally happened that yeah. way. It holds up still today, yeah. of course. Music. Yeah. Let's, let's just remind ourselves, actually, of a moment from that, that, that movie, full of magic, magic moments. This is one of the most memorable ones. It's, it's you in bed with <laughs> Marilyn Monroe. Oh, that's good. That's, that's good. Revive <laughs> 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 the old memories. The flip's coming up now, Jack. Here we are. That's good. I don't want her to know we're in cahoots. Oh, well, we won't tell anybody. We have not even Josephine. Maybe I better stay here till she goes back to sleep. You stay here as long as you like. I'm not crowding you, am I? No, it's nice and cozy. <laughs> when I was a little girl on cold nights like this, I used to crawl into bed with my sister. We'd cuddle up under the covers and pretend we were lost in a game we're trying to find our way out. <laughs> She was, but she was divine, as, as we know. Uh, she was difficult, but not on purpose. She was not temperamental. She just was, was very, very late, and uh, she would be fully made up or whatever, be on the set, and, and not in her dressing room, the permanent one, but on a little portable one, you know, the little huts that they'd have on, on the set, ready to go. But until she was psyched up personally and ready, she just couldn't come out and face it, and it drove, uh, it did not bother me as much. It, it bothered Tony more, but in the second half of the film, he had the very long scenes with her. I was off dancing with Joe E. Brown with a rose in my teeth, you know. <laughs> I, I said, well, I'll be late, Marilyn, I don't care. <laughs> uh, she was difficult that way, but it was not, as I say, temperamental. It was just the only way she knew how to work, and she would take very, very many takes sometimes. Uh, how many? Well, one time we went about, <laughs> I, I want a lot of money from Tony, because he said, we'll get it by take 40, and it went, went 47, so I won 10 bucks. <laughs> um, she just would stop a scene in the middle, even though it was going fine as far as the director and as far as the other actors went. But if it didn't feel right to her, she would just say sorry, and she'd just shake her hands to loosen up and relax and turn, and, and we'd do it again. Uh, again, not temperament. Something wasn't quite clicking for her, mm. you know. Mm. And all she had to do was come in and say, where is that bourbon? Oh, there it is. And Tony and I were standing there with our wigs and the stuff on. And that was it. And we got up to about take 42 or 3, you know, with, where is that bourbon? Oh, there, sorry. And it would stop. Where is that bourbon? Oh, there it is. That's all there was to, well, Billy had given her 85,000 different ways to do it. 
and nothing had really taken and i mean he really one of the world's greatest directors was at wit's end as to what to do with her now and finally just before we did get it and she stopped again he said uh now and possibly if you and she said don't talk to me now i'll forget how i want to play it <laughs> really stopped i mean i have never seen wilder stopped cold before but again i say this not in any derogatory sense because nobody was like mary she was unique she mm. was a wonderful comedian and and had a charisma that nobody has had before or since she was totally unique i mean it's observably true because of the casualties in hollywood that it's uh it can be a very, very grim place for a for a woman, yeah. I especially mean, for a woman. Especially for sure. a woman. Well, why? Yeah. Like it hot. Yeah. Was there a kind of ultimate test that that Wilder put you to, when you, when you knew or you knew that you were absolutely right, you were a woman, you could be accepted. Oh, there by was a woman. makeup. Yes, the way, crazy thing happened. We, uh, of course, we were all Billy included, very worried about it because it's a fine line. It's a farce, yes, and you want to have fun, yes, but there still has to be the believability. Uh, in other words, that picture wouldn't work if we had to stop and think, if I were a member of that girl's orchestra, I wouldn't believe that they weren't men. Mm. So you have that, you've got to just be able to get over that mm. and uh, still have the fun of knowing they're men impersonating women to save their lives. Uh, we went through four or five days solid, about six, eight hours a day of makeup and wigs sitting with a couple of makeup men, Tony and I, in front of the mirror, working on what we wanted to get and what we thought would be right. And uh, I finally, for some unknown reason, about the third, fourth day, uh, it got to be around 12 or 12.30, so we decided to break for lunch, and we had all of the makeup and wig on. And as we walked out of the makeup department towards the uh, commissary, I got an idea, and I said, follow me, to Tony. And I just brought him into the public women's room. You know, into the toilet. And uh, there was girls going in and out, ladies, women, older, younger, whatever, and so forth, from other films and everything. Well, we were in period costume. They didn't know we could be shooting any old picture there. And we just went into the inner part, the powder room part of it, and just fooled around with makeup for about 10 minutes. And there wasn't one woman that batted an eyeball. And they stopped and make little conversation like, uh, how's the picture going, honey? And I said, oh, fine. <laughs> They keep on going with the bee stings and everything. So we went back to Billy and told him, he said, don't touch anything. And that literally is how we arrived at, at the end of it. It happened to be the way it was in the film at that point when, when, I, when I did that. That's the best piece of so, acting, most convincing piece of acting you've ever done in your life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll take a break now. We're back in just a moment to talk some more.